welcome back to another YouTube video. I haven't done an advice video in a while, so I'm planning like how to get a nine in lots of different subjects, um, like videos. <laughs> so, um, this one, this video, obviously, as you've seen from the title, is how to get a nine in GCSE maths. And I've got a GCSE um, science one coming up. I've got a GCSE, not Ari. Can't remember, but I've got loads. So those are coming. Right, without further ado, let's get on with the video. So tip number one for to get a nine in GCSE maths is to Use the best free resources. This can be by watching free videos on YouTube by people like Math Genie, Colbert Maths, Cognito, all those people. Watching videos on YouTube is a really good way to try and understand a topic if you don't understand. If you don't understand it or you're having a hard time actually trying to answer questions from it, watching YouTube videos is a really good way to get a better understanding of that question or topic. Physics and Math Tutor is also a good website because it has loads of past papers and it's also got like these nine maps which you can find really helpful. I don't really use them but I use the past papers from that. You can also have the corporate maths booklets that they have on their website those are really good to just do constant loads of questions on a specific topic the second tip is to do loads and loads and loads of past papers try not to do too many that you will run out before you get to your GCSEs because that's not good you need loads of them near the GCSE time near mock times and things like that but Past papers are your best friend when it comes to maths. They are really helpful to find out your weaknesses and your strengths. If you find out your strengths, you'll be able to know what, that you don't need to revise those things. And if you do revise your strength, then it's just a waste of time because you know you already know everything about them. You need to revise your weaknesses and by doing past papers, you'll be able to find those weaknesses, revise them and get better at them before GCSEs start. So you can get a nine. Um, obviously make sure to do these past papers under time conditions and in a quiet space so you can kind of mimic the GCSE vibe or style when like you're in the exam hall um, and I think that would probably like help your brain know that when you get inside the exam hall it's focus time you've done this already loads of times so it shouldn't be different this time I'm gonna do this I'm gonna get on etc third tip Make flashcards on the equations. Now, I don't see many people um, doing this kind of thing. I see a few people making flashcards um, on like things like science and stuff, like me. Um, and I don't make flashcards myself on maths equations because I don't really have a hard time remembering them. But I know a lot of people do have a hard time remembering maths equations like the quadratic formula and, I don't know, um, area of the circle and things like that so if you really have a hard time remembering those maths equations make flashcards on them things like Anki, Quizlet or just paper flashcards um, because there's not too many many maths equations that you actually need to remember and just practice them. The fourth tip read mark schemes. By reading the mark schemes you know what the examiner wants to do wants you to do. You know the points that you need to make for certain questions so that you get the marks allocated even if you don't know how to answer a certain question if you've went through the mark schemes and looked at them really well you'll know what you need to put on those questions to get marks anyways even if you have no idea how to answer them for example you like if you put a unit just a random number but then if you put the unit so you could still get the mark for that unit if you put the equation for whatever um, question it is you can still get the mark for that equation and the unit so like just getting marks where you can if you don't know the answer to questions it's a really good idea and by looking at mark schemes you'd be able to know what actually you should put in your questions so that you can get those extra marks that you may miss if you were just like skipping the question entirely because you have no idea 
The fifth tip is to do little and often. Maths isn't a subject that you need to spend hours and hours revising and revising unless you're, unless you're extremely, extremely, extremely bad at maths. You don't need to spend hours and hours revising. That will make it less enjoyable. It will demotivate you. It's not good. Do little and often. Maybe 15 minutes a day. Just bust out a five a day um, Corbett Maths um, questions. Do those. Like, for example, maybe you've done a past paper and you've marked it. Go through the past paper, look at the questions you got wrong, get up Corbett Maths, go to the topics um, that you got wrong and just like do, do some questions on them and see if you can improve on them. Like just like 15 to 30 minutes every few days or so can go a long way if you do it consistently. Like you don't need to be spending hours and hours revising maths, even if you have like an exam the next day, like a mock exam. If you, even if you have that, you don't need to be spending that long. Just make sure you cover those weaknesses, you do little and often, you remember the equations maybe, remember you you remember the equations that you made on your flashcards and you're using the best free resources. Thank you for watching the video, please like and subscribe and comment down below if you find maths easy or hard. I find maths relatively easy and third maths just a little bit harder even though I've only done one lesson on it. But yeah. I'm also planning to make a video on further maths after I've done a little more of it, because I've only done one lesson, as I said.